Carl Seuss RC8 spin coder is used to evenly distribute photoresists across the surface of photosensitive substrates. There are three main parts to the system. The power control panel is where the power on and emergency shutoff buttons are located. The spinner chamber is where the spin chuck is located and where the coating takes place. The keypad and process display panel is where the parameters of a process can be entered and adjusted. The system is also equipped with a mechanical cover which helps eliminate splashback and striation for improved uniformity. The cover also allows for lower spin speeds and evaporations which reduces stress on the substrate. The system is outfitted with a fume hood as well. This prevents harmful vapors from being released into the work area. The RC8 spinner is capable of spinning wafers up to 6 inches in diameter at speeds up to 5,000 RPM. Let's now introduce our lab users. Before you can begin using the RC8 spinner, you must first log into the system at the access controller. Once you have logged in, you may press the green power on button located in the top right hand corner of the machine. At this point, you should remove the interior cover and check to make sure it is clean. This will prevent your wafer from being contaminated. Once you have replaced the interior cover back into its proper position, you may begin programming your recipe. You must first enter the program number you wish to run by using the numeric keypad on the front of the system. Once you've selected the appropriate number, press the enter button. Now that the program number is selected, press the reset button to clear the contents of the pre-existing recipe. Press the enter button twice to erase the recipe. When you want to enter your own recipe, there will be a sequence of four steps that you will have to cover. The first step will be to instruct the system that you want the process to run with the cover closed. To do this, press the 1 button and then press Enter. The system will then prompt you to enter the speed you wish the process to run at, which is the second step. The product of the number you enter multiplied by 10 is the number of RPMs the chuck will be spinning at during the process. Press the Enter button once the speed has been selected. The system will then prompt you to perform the third step, which is to enter the rate of acceleration. The product of the number you enter multiplied by 100 is the rate at which the chuck accelerates in RPM. Press the enter button once the rate of acceleration has been selected. The fourth and final step is to enter the amount of time you want the process to run. To do this, you must first press the 3 button on the numeric keypad. An LED light will begin to flash indicating that you have entered the time mode. Press the enter button. You should then be prompted to enter the amount of time that you want the process to run. Enter the time in seconds and then press the enter button. Once you've completed this step, you should be ready to begin loading your wafer onto the chuck. Before loading your wafer, you should line the chamber with tex wipes. This should help prevent the chamber from being contaminated with used photoresists. Once you've done this, you may place your wafer onto the chuck. There are varying sizes of chucks which are outfitted with pins that are designed to fit around the circumference of specific wafer sizes. These pins ensure that your wafer is centered when it's being spun. For the purposes of this training video, we'll be using a 4-inch wafer and the correct size chuck. Make sure that you use the correct size chuck for your wafer size. If your wafer does not fit snugly inside the pins, it may not be appropriately centered and can be at risk of being shattered when it is spun. It is also possible for excess photoresists to clog the vacuum holes if your wafer is too small for the chuck. Once your wafer has been properly positioned on the chuck, using a pipette, you may apply photoresist to the surface of the substrate. Photoresist vapor is highly toxic and can be very dangerous to anyone who is exposed to it. Open photoresist bottles must remain under a fume hood at all times. 
Close the plastic lid and then press the start button. The chamber lid should close automatically and your process should begin to run. Do not attempt to open the chamber lid while it is closed. This could damage the mechanism that opens and closes the lid. Once the run is complete, you should open the plastic lid and carefully remove your wafer. Remove the contaminated text wipes and wipe away any excess photoresist from the chamber. Throw the used text wipes into the solvent waste trash can, which should be located next to the system. Once you have done this, remove the interior cover and check to make sure there is no residual photoresist on it. This will ensure that the chamber is clean for future users. Replace the cover when you are finished checking it. You may now log out of the system at the access controller. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how to program a recipe, load a sample into the system, and unload a sample from the system. If you have any questions in regard to the RC8 spinner, please contact the trainer for this equipment. Please do not ask Charlie.